It's back, baby! Welcome to the Start Collecting Deathmatch, where 16 of the main factions in Warhammer 40k duke it out in a knockout tournament using only their Start Collecting boxes. My name's Guy, you're watching Midwinter Minis, and in this matchup, we've got the Pride of the Emperor, the post human living weapons, the Vanguard Space Marines, facing off against the Minions of Change, the otherworldly Demons of Zinch. While these games are essentially just for fun, you should get a good idea of how these armies play in small competitive games and learn their strengths and weaknesses just from watching. We're now in game 6, and it's been a while since the last episode, so let's have a quick recap of the rules and scenario, and then we'll check out the armies. In this tournament, all armies, no matter the point value or power level, will be limited to 3 command points at the start of the game. The custom built arena is combat patrol sized, objective scoring zones and deployment zones are marked out with white lines, and the board is symmetrical. Games last just 4 turns, and the battlefield has 3 scoring zones, one in each deployment zone and one in the centre, each worth 5 victory points if held uncontested in your command phase, starting from turn 2. The Zone Mortalis walls are heavy cover, they block line of sight and they can be scaled, affording climbers a plus 1 save bonus. Each player can select one secondary objective, basically for tiebreaker purposes, but if the scores are still tied at the end of turn 4, the battle will go on for one more turn. And despite the name, it's not just a kill fest, there are tactics involved. If an army is ahead on points at the end of turn 4, they can still technically win, even if they've been completely destroyed. That should give more tactical forces a fair shot of taking the title. Now, I'm totally inexperienced with playing both of these armies, so I've got my friends Ant and Phil here to make sure we have a fun, competitive game. Right then, let's have a look at the armies. Take it away, Ant. Hi there, it's Ant here, back again for one of these battle reports, and I'm playing the Space Marines today. Today, I am playing the Vanguard box set, and they are going to be playing as Crimson Fists. So the army consists of the Lieutenant, and he's got Iron Resolve as a Warlord trait. That gives him one additional wound, and also it gives him a 6-up Feel No Pain. So any wound that he loses on a 6, he doesn't lose it, which could come in pretty handy against all of these mortal wounds that Zinch are going to be dishing out to me. You've got a unit of suppressors with auto cannons. They're jumpy, so they can move about wherever they want. You've got the infiltrators. That's a squad of 10. They're pretty sneaky. They can actually set up wherever on the board as long as they're 9 inches away. And then you've got three eliminators with the sniper rifles. They've got a choice of three different rounds that they can shoot depending on the target. They can lie in wait, they've got these cloaks that gives them an extra one-up save, and just overall pretty sneaky, really. So the great thing about this army is that they've got a lot of shooting power. They can move around the board and zip about, and they've got this rapid fire rule, which is great. Now Space Marines would normally get the combat doctrines, which would allow you to have a minus one on certain weapons at certain stages of the game. Unfortunately, that isn't really going to come into play here because of all of the invulnerable saves that the Zinch army have. So what the Crimson Fists allow me to do is shoot any bolt weapons, and then on any sixes that hit, I add an additional hit on top of that. So that is all of my units, apart from the suppressors with the auto cannons. Now, although the shooting is good, the Zinch have got these invulnerable saves, and they've also got this really nasty psychic ability, which this box set just cannot really counter that easily. I think this is going to be a really, really tough match for the Space Marines. Okay, hi, I'm Phil. Um, I've been allowed to borrow Guy's wonderfully painted Zench Demons today. So my army consists of the Fate Skimmer, who has been my Warlord. He has the Born of Sorcery Warlord trait, which gives me plus one to my Psychic tests. So he has the um, Impossible Robe as a Relic, which is brilliant, and at any point of time, if he fails a um, save, he can just choose to make the attack damage zero. He has two Psychic powers, the Boon of Change and the Bolt of Change. They're both called the Something of Change. We have um, a unit of 10 Horus, a very short range shooter unit, but they're exceptionally tanky as the entire army has a 3 plus invulnerable save against shooting. And they have the ability to split off into little horrors. And because Guy has painted up the Fate Skimmer without the little blue horrors on them, I've got three blue horrors to play with today, but no Brimstone horrors, which is a bit of a problem. I've got a unit of Screamers that are flying Death Stingrays that want to hurt you as they just fly over your heads. I've got a unit of Flamers who are absolutely amazing. They get up close and they set you on fire. 
and I have an exalted flamer. He's basically just a bigger, nastier flamer that makes my flamers even better. The secondary objective I've chosen today is Slade Warlord because Ant Warlord is only six wounds and I think I've got a very good chance of killing him. For my secondary objective, I have chosen Domination, which means that if I control two objectives, I get an extra three victory points on top of the victory points that I'd get for controlling those objectives anyway. Also, both of the armies are battle-forged patrol detachments, so we'll start with three command points and generate one in each command phase. So in terms of my deployment here, the main goal is to try and take as many objectives as quickly as possible so that I can gain that secondary objective. Now, my lieutenant, I know, is going to be the target of a lot of attacks here so that Phil can score that Slay the Warlord. So I've put him right at the back, still on an objective, and I've put my suppressors around him because they have got a huge range. So they can basically just sit there shooting stuff as long as they can see it. Result. My snipey boys, I've put on the wall. So they're gonna get a plus one to their saving throw. They've got enough range so they can just be dishing out the shots. Then what I've done is rather than combat squad my infiltrators, I've stuck them into a great big blob of 10 and stuck them in the middle on that objective. Thanks very much to their concealed positions rule, which means that they can basically set up anywhere on the battlefield as long as it's more than nine inches away from the enemy. Without deploying his infiltrators in the middle of the board, I have decided to be super aggressive. I've deployed my horrors and my flamers right up in the middle and they're just going to run straight at him so I can try and take that middle objective. So the Screamers and the Fate Skimmer both have fly, so I've hidden them behind the wall there and they're going to be able to fly straight over and try to get that lieutenant. Other than that, my plan is to just be hyper aggressive. Oh, I've got first turn, which is great for me. That's exactly what the Space Marines need. Okay, so first turn for the Space Marines. Going into my command phase, I'm going to gain one command point, bringing me up to four. And then I'm going to play Orbital Bombardment Stratagem. So it's three command points, it's pretty pricey, but it means that I can put a marker down on the battlefield. And then anyone that's within six inches of that marker, the next command phase, then they're going to be scoring D3 mortal wounds. Within three inches, I'm sorry, that's going to be D6 mortal wounds. Take that, zinch. I'm pretty comfortable with where my army are actually sat at the moment, so I'm not going to move any models this turn. Now onto my shooting phase. This is where I've really got to try and do some damage here. Those flamers are really nasty. I do not want them coming up into my face. So I'm going to target the flamers with my infiltrators. My eliminators are also going to go into the flamers. And then the auto cannons on the suppressors, guess what? They're also going into the flamers. I want them wiped out. What did they do to you? They're disgusting. Okay, so infiltrators, they're going to be shooting first. They haven't moved, so they get rapid fire, even though they're outside of that half distance that would normally count. So that means they're going to be having 20 shots coming in against those flamers, hitting on threes. Remember, due to Crimson Fists, because I scored two sixes, that means two additional attacks are going to go on top. Not bad. Flamers of Toughness 4, that means I'm going to be wounding these on 4s, but re-rolling 1s because of the Warlord trait. These Infiltrators have got the Infiltrator comms array, which means they still benefit, even though they're outside of that 6-inch range that would normally apply. That's 7 that actually go through and wound. All of my army has a 3 plus invulnerable save against shooting attacks, and that save cannot be modified in any way. So I failed 3 wounds there, so that's 1 dead Flamer. Next up to shoot, these snipey boys, those eliminators are going to be using a hyper frag round, which means that it's a heavy D3. Let's see how many shots we get. So that's a two. I'm happy to take that. No command point reroll here. So that's a total of six shots going through to those flamers, hitting on twos. That's one six. That's one additional attack and one miss. So effectively, we've still got six hits. Everything's good. Strength five of the weapon, toughness four, freeze two wound. It's three wounds actually going through to the flamers. We could have another dead flamer on the go here. Oh! I can't afford at this point of time to lose another flamer, so I'm going to command reroll one of those dice. And one survives with one wound. What are those dice? Are they dice for ants? Okay, so continuing with the shooting. Now it's the suppressor's turn. These have got some heavy cannons coming through. Three shots each, heavy three. Ooh, strength seven though. Let's see how the flamers handle this little slice of cake. Threes to hit. Shame I don't get the exploding sixes on these because they're not bolt weapons, but mm, let's just go with it. Strength seven on the suppressors versus the toughness four of the flamers. Freeze to wound. Rerolling ones due to the lieutenant being very close. Still a miss. Well, that's very unlucky. 
I think my dice might be cursed. So that's two damage each. Those flamers are gone. I am so relieved. So I'm pretty comfortable with that first turn. I'm out of range of anything. I'm not going to do any more charging. I am just going to sit where I am. Let's have a look at my secondary objective though, domination. At the end of my turn, if I'm controlling more than half of the objectives, I get three victory points. I'm controlling more than half, so let's score those three victory points right now. Now let's see what Zinch can get up to. I'm sure it's going to be a bit tricky. I'm a little bit shocked that my flamers are dead. Didn't expect that straight away, but let's see what I can do now. In my command phase, I get one more command point. At the start of every turn for a demons player now, they now get to roll on the warp storm table. They get to roll eight dice and every four plus, they give them a warp storm point that they can spend on cool, funky demon powers. I rolled my dice and I managed to get three out of eight. Not great, but better than nothing. Okay, so I'm leaving the horrors in the backfield because they should be in range to shoot at the infiltrators, but they're also able to claim that back objective. I've moved everything up. The exalted flamer needs to get close so he can use his flame attack weapon, and the screamers and the fate skimmer need to be up close to be able to do anything at all. So now it's clearly the best phase in the game, psychic. My fate skimmer has three psychic powers, has smite, like everyone does, boon of change, and bolt of change. I'm going to cast smite against the infiltrators because they're the only possible target and I'm going to cast Bolt of Change against the Snipey Boys as they're now known. That's unlucky, I really need that psychic power to go off so I'm going to use a command point to re-roll both of those dice. That's much better. So when Bolt of Change is cast, you roll nine dice and for every five plus you do a mortal wound. If a model is killed, another mortal wound is inflicted on the unit. I managed to inflict two mortal wounds, so that's a dead snipey boy, and another one that's been wounded. I'm now going to cast Smite on the Infiltrators. Oh, that's a shame. I really needed that to go off, but I've already used my command point this phase, so nothing I can do there. I am loving these white dice rolls. That psychic phase could have been scary as hell, but yeah. actually, pff, I got lucky with them rolls. Let's see if my shooting phase is going to be any better. I'm going to shoot the horrors at the infiltrators directly in front of them. The exalted flamer is going to try and get vengeance for the death of his little buddies and also shoot the infiltrator. And the fate skimmer now has a shooting attack and they're going to shoot the snipey boys. So we'll start with the fate skimmer. He needs three pluses to hit with his staff of change. That's three hits, I'm happy with that. Strength seven, so I need freeze to wound. Well, that's disappointing as well. So I'm going to need a six to save this snipey boy. Oh, it's so close. Unfortunately, that is one more snipey boy down. So I'm going to fire the exalted flamer next. I'm going to use the pink fire. So that's 2d6 shots. Okay, I'm happy with that. That's 10 hits. So the pink fire need fours to wound. Okay, again, really not a bad roll there. Eight wounds at AP minus two with one damage each. So five plus is needed on this. It's not impossible. Three saves made, three wounds go through. One damage each, which means one dead space marine and one on just one wound. Okay, that was a little bit disappointing. I expected to do a little bit more damage there. Let's see if the pink horrors can do any better. Two shots each at range 18 and these are three plus to hit. Okay, so that's seven misses. I'm really happy with that. Okay, so I'm going to choose to use the stratagem Minions of Magic, which allows my horrors, if they get a six to wound, to have an AP value of minus three. Now the horrors are strength four, so I'm going to need fours to wound. Only one six there, so that's only one hit at minus three, but there are a lot of hits, so I'm happy with that. And all the other attacks are at minus one AP, so that's still really good. First up, saving the AP minus three, needing a six, that's a two, oof. So that's one dead space marine so far. Okay, fours up needed on the save. Oh my god. Uh, only two saved? Ooh, that's three dead marines. That's vengeance for my flamers. So that's the end of my shooting phase. I'm quite happy with that. I think the exalted flamer could have done a little bit better, but I think the horrors pulled it out for him. Now onto my charge phase. I'm going to charge the Screamers and the Fate Skimmer straight into that unit of Infiltrators. Yeah, you know what? And the Flamer as well. So I could Overwatch, but I've only got one command point and I'd rather save that for later during the fight phase. So uh, yeah, they can just come into me. So I needed between five and six inches for every single unit and every single unit charged in. Obviously, they're still very, very angry about those Flamers that died before they got to do anything at all. Okay, so I'm going to start with the Fate Skimmer. They have Screamer Bites with the two Screamers that I put into them, so that's six attacks. Hitting on fours and wounding on threes. Only one wound. So, okay, uh, I need a six to save this, otherwise it's another dead Marine. 
Oh, that's completely the opposite of what I needed. So that's another dead marine. So even though Ant took that marine away, because they charged his turn, the screamers can still pile in and get stuck in and try and eat their faces. Mwap, mwap. So the screamers need to hit on a four plus. That's not great, but I'll have to stick with it. So the screamers are strength six, so they're gonna need three plus to wound. Now, I will command point that too, because I want to get as many of these wounds through because they are minus three AP. That's much better. Okay, so I need four sixes. These are doing two damage each, so everyone I fail was another dead space marine. Oh my god, that's four dead space marines! <laughs> that's vengeance for my flamers. My sweet, innocent flamers. So I can now consolidate my screamers. I think they're going to turn around and go straight back to that one surviving snipey boy. The snipey boy, let's see if he needs a leadership test. So he's got a leadership of eight, he lost two. So if I was to roll a d6, I'd get eight anyway. So there's no way he can fail it. So he's staying put on his little wall. So that's the end of my turn one. I was a little bit worried at the beginning there because my entire plan hinged on those flamers coming up and burning those space marines alive. And they died before they got a chance. I was a little bit disappointed with the psychic phase. Normally they can do a little bit more, but that combat phase completely turned it around for me. I'm starting turn two with much fewer bodies on the board than I had in turn one. Command phase on turn two. Let's just give myself an extra command point. Also, I'm scoring five victory points for holding that objective at the back. It ain't much, but it's honest work. My orbital bombardment marker is still on the board and within six inches is the chariot and the exalted flamer. So each one of those are gonna be suffering D3 mortal wounds. So chariot first, uh, that's a one. Okay, one is better than nothing, right? And the flamer takes two. Now onto my movement phase. I really wanna try and deny that objective in the middle. So I'm gonna use my suppressors to do that by moving them forward closer to the action. Now with the snipey boy. Hmm. I'm going to move him down so that he can charge those screamers that are going to come into him anyway. So might as well try and tie them up a little bit. Shooting phase. So those suppressors are going to be shooting at the flamer because they've got a funky little rule that actually prevents Overwatch being fired when they score a hit. The snipey boy is going to take a shot at those screamers and then the lieutenant is also going to take a pop at those screamers. So selecting the snipey boy to shoot at the screamers first, let's choose the hyperfrag round. How many shots are we getting? Oh dear, D3 and that's only one shot. Because it moves heavy weapon rather than twos, it's going to be hitting on threes. Lucky six. Remember, it's a bolt weapon, so due to Crimson Frist. Frist? <laughs> Crimson Frisk. Frist in! Get an extra attack on that one. Strength five versus toughness four of the Screamers, threes to wound. Two hits, two wounds. All of my demons have a three plus invulnerable save. That's a three and a five. My Screamers are absolutely fine. Now on to my Lieutenant. He's going to be shooting into the Screamers. Because of Bolt's Discipline, he gets to shoot twice rather than just once thanks to rapid fire. Two shots. Needing threes to hit. Two score. Strength four, toughness four of the Screamers. We need fours. Oh, well, we got two wounds going on right here. I still only need a three plus because of my crazy Zench Demon stuff. Those Screamers just don't care. Let's see if the Suppressors can actually save any face here. So it's three shots each. They are going to be hitting on minus one, so fours to hit. Whilst that could be seen as disappointing shooting, I did score three hits, which means that the special rule on the suppressor's gun causes the flamer not to be able to overwatch. Pretty good, because um, they're going to be charging him next. Three's needed to wound. Two wound. Better than the poke in the eye of a stick. Three plus to save again. Oh, I actually failed one that time. That's two damage onto the exalted flamer. On to my charge phase. I'm going to use a stratagem here called Hammer of Wrath. This allows the suppressors to charge in, and for every model in that unit, I roll a d6. If I beat the target toughness, which is a 5 in this case, it means that it does an additional mortal wound. 3 coming in. Unfortunately, no. That's no wounds. Got close with a 5, but close is not good enough. In my charge phase, I've got the suppressors going to be charging the flamer, and I've got my snipey boy. He's going to be charging into the screamers. The suppressors are in. Because they charge, because of shock assault, they get one additional attack each. So that's 10 attacks coming through into the flamer. Needing threes to hit, so that's six hits that have gone through so far. Nice. Just strength four on those suppressors, hitting toughness five on that flamer. Needing fives to wound. Not so good. It's two wounds going through, you know, let's see if it's enough to kill it. I only get a six plus save in combat, so let's see if he can survive this. 
there's no chance, he's dead. So with the flamer gone, I could consolidate my suppressors into that chariot, but I'm not going to, don't worry about it. It's cool, no, you can just stay there and not be in combat range with me. Thank you, stay, don't want you. Are you sure, Ant? You sure you don't want to come into combat? Nope. Now onto Snipey Sergeant Boy. Would normally get three attacks, but because of the shock assault, he's pushed in and charged, that means he gets an additional attack. Needing threes to hit, huzzah, three hits. I'll take that, it's gonna be fours to wound. So, uh, that's two wounds. Interestingly, for a unit that wants to be in combat, the Screamers only have a six plus save. Oh, I saved one. So one wound on the Screamer. Well, my Screamer survived, so now it's time for me to bite his face off. So the Screamers hit on a four plus. Let's see how they do. Yeah, that's good. So they have a strength of six and they're wounding on a three plus with an AP of minus three. That's pretty bad, but if I score a Yahtzee here, that's gonna be fantastic, right? Yeah, as expected, he's toast. I'll consolidate the Screamers towards the Jumpy Boys. I wanna make sure they get eaten next. That's the fight phase done. Pretty painful, but no leadership test to take. So uh, we're all good here. So end of my turn. I've got my secondary objective, Domination. All my Vanguard units have objective secured, which means that right now, I'm actually scoring both those objectives, which means I score three victory points. So at the start of my turn, I get one more command point. His horrors are sitting on that back objective, so he scores five victory points too. And now I get to roll on the warp storm table to see if I get any cool funky effects. Five out of eight, some cool stuff I can do with that. Okay, so in my movement phase, those horrors are gonna stay exactly where they are because those suppressors came straight towards them, which is what they want. My screamers are gonna fly over the top of those suppressors because they've got a cool slashing attack for when they move over an enemy unit. And my fate skimmer is gonna go straight towards his lieutenant, who I've now named Alan. The screamers have a really cool rule called slashing dive. When they move over an enemy unit, you can roll a d6 for each model. And on the four plus, the enemy unit suffers a mortal wound. So that's one mortal wound. Okay, so now onto the best phase of the game, psychic phase. So my fate skimmer's gone straight for Alan and is gonna cast both smite and bolt of change to try and take him out. If I take him out, that's my secondary objective completed. So because Alan has been targeted uh, for a psychic attack, he actually has this warlord trait that is the reliquary of Galathamar which means that basically it's minus one on a psychic for the test. My Fate Skimmer has the Boon of Sorcery as his command trait, which gives him plus one to his psychic tests. So kind of equaling out the odds. Seven plus to cast Bolt of Change, that's a nine. Every five plus is a mortal wound. So let's see how much damage Alan's gonna take from this. Five mortal wounds for Alan. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so this is this is pretty frightening psychic phase. He only normally gets five wounds. So that would be him dead, right? Aha! But because his Warlord trait is Iron Resolve, it means he gets one additional wound, bringing him up to six wounds. And then on a six, for every wound he takes, he doesn't feel it. Just shrugs it off like the boss that he is. All right, okay, it's one six, but that means there's only four mortal wounds. So Alan's got two wounds left, still in the game. But let's see what happens against Smite. Okay, I'll take that. That's D6 mortal wounds on Alan. Okay, that's a one. I'm gonna use a command reroll for that because I need it not to be a one is a bit better. So three wounds, three six up, feel no pains. Let's see if we can do this. <laughs> oh shit, boy! <laughs> All right, that's two sixes, uh, which means only one mortal wound goes through. Alan has got one more wound. He is still in here fighting like a trooper. Okay, on to the shooting phase. I'm going to get the horrors to shoot at the suppressors, try and take them off that middle objective. And the fate skimmer is going to try and take that last wound off of Alan. So suppressors have been declared as a target of a shooting attack. Now I can play this stratagem smokescreen because they have the smokescreen keyword, which means that in order to shoot them, they are minus one to hit. Throwing down that smokescreen. Ooh, you can't see me. It's like John Cena, right? Okay, that's a really nice trick but I'm going to use Deluge of Fire from the Warp Storm effect table at the start of my turn. That costs four Warp Storm points, but that gives all of my units plus one to hit in Ballistic Skill. Okay, so I'm firing those horrors at those suppressors. I need a three plus to hit. Okay, that's really good. Suppressors are toughness four, horrors are strength four, so I need fours to wound. Okay, so that's five wounds, AP minus one, so that's four plus saves. Only one damage each though. Okay, that's not bad. I mean, I've got three saves, but it does mean that two wounds are gonna go through to those suppressors. So one dead suppressor and uh, another one on one wound. Okay, so the Fate Skimmer's gonna shoot at Alan now. Normally he needs three pluses to hit, but because of that warp table effect, he's only gonna need twos. 
Okay, that's two hits. It's a strength seven, so that's gonna be three plus to wound. Okay, that is only one wound, but it is an AP minus four. He's down to this six up, feel no pain. Can Alan survive this? Oh my God, Alan, you are the luckiest person alive right now. I feel like Alan may actually be a zinch cultist in disguise. So onto the charge phase. So that's the six for the screamers to charge into the suppressors. And it's a six for the Fate Skimmer to charge into Alan. So we're going to start with the Screamers. They've got three attacks each, fours to hit, but with a strength of six, it's going to be threes to wound. So that's only three to hit. Okay, that's only two successes. I might use that last command point and that one just to see if I can get another wound through. That's better. That's three wounds through on the Suppressors now. And with an AP of minus three, only got a six plus save. Okay, so I saved one, uh, but two hits have gone through with two damage each. That is the Suppressor unit wiped out. Suppressors suppressed. So the Fate Scream is going to charge into Alan now, needing fours to hit. That's three hits. Again, distinctly average. With strength six and Alan's only got a toughness of four, so that's two wounds on Alan. Again, minus three AP. Okay, six up saving throw for Alan. All right, okay, so that's two that have gone through, but he does have this six up feel no pain when he receives a wound. Oh, it's one saved. One goes through, Alan, I'm sorry, bud, but you're toast. So that is my entire army wiped out. So with the Lieutenant dead, he's my Warlord. Phil's gonna score that secondary objective. That's gonna be six victory points. So we're just matching with victory points, but on Phil's next command phase, oh boy, he's gonna get another 15 victory points. So there's no way that I can win this. Well done, Phil, good going. These inch guys, oh, 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 they mean business. Good luck to whoever's facing them in the next matchup. But you know, Alan gave it a good go. Well done, Alan. Let's be more like Alan. Well, I'm really happy with how that went. The three plus invulnerable save to shooting is just insane. The only weakness is in combat with only six plus save on most units. So I think against something like orcs that wanna get into combat with you, they're gonna have a really tough time. But against shooting armies, space marines, Tau, Elder even, I think they've got a really good, strong chance against any of those. Whew, well, that was pretty intense. Lots of twists and turns and loads of fun, but we ended in a pretty predictable result, I think, especially considering it's one of the newest codices versus literally the oldest 9th edition codex. That means the Demons of Zinch go through to the next round, and once their turn comes round again, they'll be facing off against the Thousand Suns. That should be an intensely killy game, mortal wounds coming at you from all directions. The next fixture, though, is the Astra Militarum versus the Slaneshi Demons. And don't worry, I won't make you wait a whole year for it, I promise. If you want to see how I painted the Demons of Zinch, or made the backdrop of the arena, there'll be links at the end of this video to follow. And before I go, I'd just like to give a huge loving shout out to the newest members of the Midwinter Minis Patreon family, who, without exaggerating here, help us keep the lights on, the cameras running, and the coffee brewed to keep making videos like this for everyone to enjoy. Huge thanks to Kyle McCallum, Buck Todges, Doc Watt, Chris Jackson, Harry the Harlequin, Tim Moyer, El Cid, Carl Allen, Robert Barbosa, Calidius One, Alan Purdy, Alan Baker, Marcus Cornett, Clarissa, TS Coot01, Kevin, Daisho, Mola Mola, Broken Heroics, Jordan Miller, Scott Bradley, Benjamin Penman, Gareth Davies, James Rushworth, Tommy Davis, Ricky Zayahut, Gareth Peake, Stuart Pollard, Midnight Mist, Nicholas Crosby, Matthew6252, Corn Honey Nut Crunch, Landon Fulton, Dylan Wood, Aprex Elliott, May the Punk, Jonathan Cuda, Mickey Dean, Get Stick Bugged, Tom A, Atari Grub, and Doug Lawyer. Thank you so much for watching. Please like the video to help other people find it, subscribe if you want to see more, and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.